kidney stones are rising. They are becoming more common in children and women, and we're not quite sure why this is occurring. We do know that there's multiple ways to form a kidney stone. Uh, one way being uh, chronic dehydration, so we recommend that all patients with kidney stones increase their fluid intake so that they drink at least two to three liters of fluid a day. If you've had uh, multiple kidney stones or you have uh, kidney failure or difficulty with your kidneys, we recommend that you undergo a full metabolic evaluation uh, to determine exactly why you yourself are forming stones. It may be a problem with your diet, it may be a genetic disorder that requires medications, but it's important that you um, understand why you, in fact, do develop stones. If you have a symptomatic kidney stone, which is causing you pain, blood in the urine, or um, urinary tract infections, we recommend that it is treated. Very small kidney stones, um, less than five millimeters in size, will often pass spontaneously, meaning that you will urinate out the stone. Uh, sometimes that can be quite painful. Um, other times people can pass them with uh, very little difficulty. Each person is different. Uh, if you do pass a kidney stone, it's important that you keep the stone and bring it in for analysis so we know what it is made of, and um, that helps us determine how it was formed. If you do not pass the stone, or if you have a stone larger than five millimeters that is uh, causing symptoms, we recommend that you have surgical intervention. There are three main types of surgeries for kidney stones, um, and I'll talk briefly about all three of them. The first one is shockwave lithotripsy. And this is uh, for stones that are less than one centimeter in size and that are either in the upper ureter or the kidney. And with this treatment, uh, the patient lays on a bed that has x-ray capabilities and shock waves are put through the body to the stone and break up the stone. Uh, the patient then has to pass the small particles that are produced. Uh, this is considered a minimally invasive treatment option. I think when patients have this procedure performed, they must be aware that the success rate is not extremely high and the procedure may need to be repeated. However, with that said, it uh, requires very little effort on the part of the patient and can usually be done as an outpatient surgery. The second treatment is ureteroscopy. And again, it's for stones that are about one centimeter in size or smaller, and it can be performed for stones anywhere in the urinary tract so the kidney, upper, and lower ureter. And ureteroscopy is again performed in an outpatient surgery setting, and a small scope, which is smaller than a ballpoint pen, is inserted up the urethra, um, into the ureter, into the level of the stone. At the stone, a laser is used to break the stone up into multiple pieces, which are then pulled out with a basket. Ureteroscopy has a very high success rate. You have a very high likelihood that the stone will be removed at the time of surgery. However, uh, it does require that a stent be left in place. And urinary stents can be irritating to patients. The urinary stent is temporary and may need to be in place for 48 hours or even up to two weeks, depending on how the procedure goes and how much swelling is noted at the time of surgery. The final type of procedure is called percutaneous nephrolithotomy. And with percutaneous nephrolithotomy, a small incision is made in the patient's side and a scope is placed from the skin into the kidney to the level of the stone. And the stone is removed using a combination of ultrasound and laser. Um, percutaneous nephrolithotomy is highly effective, has the highest stone free rate, um, and it's usually reserved for stones larger than one centimeter in size. With that procedure, you would plan to spend a night in the hospital um, or up to two nights, depending on how large your stone is. And we would get a CAT scan the next day to ensure that all stone fragments were removed. I think if you have a family history of kidney stones or you yourself have experienced a kidney stone, it's important that you see a specialist that has um, had fellowship training in stone disease. Uh, so that they can offer all available treatment options. And once the stone is removed, you should also have a comprehensive metabolic evaluation to prevent further stone formation.